Common Council meetings were made to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk call roll, please? Brown. Here. Evans. Here. Booty. Here. Groton. Here. Schuster. Here. Shanks. Here. Mary Wagner. Here. Okay, at this time I entertain a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved. Second. Motion by Brown, second by Schuster. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Approved minutes of previous meetings. So moved. Second. Motion by Shanks, second by Grattan. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next, we have approval of intervening meetings. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Motion by Foody, second by Evans. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Next, we have a public hearing. Proposed application for the CDBGED. If I could, Mayor, I, this is Dave Rasmussen from MSA Professional Services. If I could go through a few things and then, uh, you know, open it up for public comment, I would appreciate the opportunity. So. Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to call the public hearing to order. Second. Motion by Shanks, second by Brown. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. I will turn it over to you, my friend. Okay, thank you. Uh, again, this is Gabe Rasmussen, MSA Professional Services, and the uh, um, city has been um, contracting with us to put the application together uh, for the CDBG Economic Development uh, uh, grant application that they're putting together. So I'll just quickly go through a, a you know kind of basic overview of the CDBG program. Uh, this is uh, federal funds that were enacted through the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974. And the Wisconsin State, the State Department of Administration is the agency, the state agency that administers these federal funds uh, to the communities in the state of Wisconsin. Its goals include the benefit to low moderate income households and uh, targeting their funding to areas of greatest need uh, for housing, public facility, and economic development. Uh, each year, the DOA uh, receives approximately $28 million um, per year from HUD for the housing program, public infrastructure improvements, and the economic development uh, program. The housing uh, activities uh, uh, include uh, owner and renter rehab, uh, there is also the public facilities program, which you're very familiar with, uh, for helping with uh, neighborhood uh, improvements, water, sewer, streets, and so forth. Uh, there is also the economic development program, which we'll be uh, uh, acting on tonight. Uh, those are low interest loans to businesses in exchange for job creation. And it used to be that that program um, that program did uh, was a loan, and that loan had to be paid back. But uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, uh, HUD came around and said there was too much money sitting around, uh, in not being uh, not being uh, spent, and so now they're requiring that those funds be paid back. Um, if the business uh, does create the number of jobs that they're creating, that is a forgivable loan now. So it's uh, it's really quite nice that, uh, um, you know, if they meet those commitments, then, um, then it becomes basically a forgivable loan. So with that, um, I guess I'll just turn it over to see if there's any public comments in terms of uh, any needs, uh, housing needs, anything like that. Um, so, again, if you have any questions, uh, 
feel free to to uh, ask those questions. It's a public hearing. So. Anybody in attendance wishing to speak? Anybody in attendance wishing to speak? Third and final time. Anybody in attendance or by way of electronic communications wishing to speak? No. No citizen input. Let the record show. Thank you. Kind of did this backwards. I was supposed to read, the City of Juneau will conduct a public hearing regarding its proposed application for Community Development Block Grant for Economic Development, known as CDBGED. The public is invited to attend to learn more about the CDBG program to help identify additional community development needs and to comment on the activities proposed to be included in the CDBG application. We do have a motion and second on the floor to open the public hearing. I did ask if there was anybody in attendance to wish to speak in favor of the CDBG grant. Now I will ask if there's anybody in attendance to speak against the CDBG grant. Anybody wishing to speak against? Third and final time. Anybody in attendance wishing to speak against the CDBG grant? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve closing the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion by Shanks, second by Foodie. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The public hearing is closed. Anything else you'd like to comment on tonight? There are a, couple, a resolution and so forth further on in the agenda that uh, I'll be present if there's any questions on that. Appreciate that. Okay, moving on. Communications. We have Dan Yonke of Piggly Wiggly presenting funds for the Christmas lights. <clears throat> I don't know if Many of you knew, but I'm sure the people that shop in the store did know. Dan was gracious enough to put forth an, a roundup effort at the checkout counters to uh, to establish, and I guess well, we do have the fund already, but to add funds to our Christmas lighting fund, and uh, he's here tonight. Yes. Yeah, so as you all well know, I, in my efforts, as my wife and I, Jane, uh, purchased Piggly Wiggly several years ago. Uh, to improve the city of Juneau and I think we're in the right direction we've given a lot back to communities not only the city of Juneau but surrounding communities because they all support us as well uh, so this struck me this is my idea uh, I drove into the city of Juneau um, as you all know I tenure council member and Christmas lights in the city, you want to better with the city, right? So I came in from Waupon and I saw the city Christmas lights on Highway 26 coming to the city of Juneau and I said, that's awesome. I said, it looked amazing. I said, we need to continue that. And I know there was a program with the, you, the utilities, uh, WPI, and I said, do a roundup. So what Roundup means at the, at the, at the Yankees Piggly Wiggly is that anything that, uh, if it's $12.90, you round up to $13, the money goes to the charity you go to. So I chose at, at February and March that we go to the city of Juneau for Christmas lights. So a lot of comments like, why are you buying Christmas lights in February? March. <laughs> we explained it. I said, well, we want to continue on down uh, 26 that way. So the feedback from the community was great. So all in all, and I also did a silent auction, and I also had to have buckets at each register. So in essence, that uh, the auction that I had in the lobby for one week, we raised $820. Mm -hmm. 
The buckets we raised five hundred sixty-seven dollars, and the roundup was four thousand one hundred thirteen dollars and one cents. So I'd like to present on behalf of my wife and Jane, uh, Jane and my wife, uh, my <laughs> wife Jane, and myself, a uh, total of five thousand five hundred dollars and one cent to the city of Juneau to improve our city and uh, continue to grow and make our city better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. I know there's always a story after the story on how we got going with this. I'll credit uh, former councilman Jason Buskey. Jason had a dream. He wanted one of these big banners that the Welcome to Juno end or whatever Christmas banner and what have you. After researching uh, the cost of those banners, which was rather extravagant, and we were going to have to set permanent poles to be able to hang them from. They are a wind catcher, and any community that's got them says, tells you stay away from them because they're a lot of work. They wear out in a hurry, and uh, they're just kind of a hassle. So Jason and I were kind of uh, brainstorming one night, and we said, Let's get something going that our goal is that the Highway 26 route will have lights from one end to the other. So that's all that all happened. You know? So uh, WPPI, um, they have a community, uh, uh, not program, community contribution. contribution program there where they'll fund anything the Juno utility comes up with that's doable and they'll match it. So, you know, if the city of Juno or Juno utilities elect to to give $1,000 towards Christmas lights in one given year, they they will match it with $1,000. Juno Lions has also been very instrumental in providing funds for this. So I guess our goal is to get them all the way out to your store, Dan. Or That's, either we start at your store and work our way in, well, one of the two. I want to tell you, the, the, the citizens that we look forward to, uh, they commented about coming in from the north side, like to see from the south side. I said, anything you can do to improve the city, uh, you got a good step start, $5,500. I mean, uh, I've heard a lot of positive feedback. Uh, and it's, it's just the roundup. I mean, roundup and auction. And, and uh, uh, I talked to Scott, Scott and Nick from the utility, and they, they're, they're all fired up about it. So it's nice. So if we can do it, improve our city, that's what it's all about. We thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you Thanks, very Dan. much. <laughs> I guess just for information also, since we started the LED Christmas lights were kind of in its infancy and we were paying like $750 a unit for each one of those hanging lights or hanging uh, decorations. Now they're down to about $500. So, you know, um, what Dan presented here tonight will give us at least 10 more. 10 more um, full hangings, so awesome. we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon we'll have the whole route done. Then we'll look at the banner. <laughs> Oak Street. Oak Street, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're still using the old uh, decorations on Oak Street, but like I said, I think we uh, focused on in through the through fair and what have you, but we will focus in on Oak Street as well. Okay, moving on. Baker Tilly presentation of the 2020 financial statements. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Amanda Oliver with Baker Tilly, and thanks for having me tonight. Um, I am, I think, sharing my screen with um, a graph on it. Can everyone see that and hear me okay? Nope. Yes, we can. Okay, all right. Kind of hard to hear sometimes uh, in the room, so. All right, so thanks for having me. I just want to present um, some highlights of the 2020 uh, financial statements of the city. Uh, we did uh, complete the audit uh, very recently here and issued the financial statements along with the opinion on those statements, um, as well as a related uh, reporting and insights letter. Um, you should have received uh, each or both of those documents, and you'll see that um, the graphs that we're going to go through tonight 
um, are actually at the back of that um, reporting and insights letter. So you can refer to those as we move along. Um, we often focus uh, very um, closely and, and take a look at the general fund of the uh, city to measure the financial health and results of um, the city as a whole. Uh, I won't be touching on the utility funds tonight. If there are any questions, um, we can uh, address that at a later time. But we are, um, so the general fund uh, is the main operating fund of the city. So much of the tax levy goes there. Um, and a lot of the intergovernmental revenues go there. Uh, like transportation aid, state shared revenues, um, that kind of thing. So, and then we pay administration, public safety, public works, those general costs also come out of that fund. Um, so the page that we're looking at here uh, summarizes the fund balance of the general fund. Um, it breaks it down into different categories based on the relative liquidity of the uh, fund balance. So the fund balance is essentially the equity, the assets minus the liabilities. Um, and so you'll see um, um, there are a few bars here and it is a comparison of um, this year or 2020 compared to 2019. And you'll see how things have changed over time. So the top bar is the total fund balance. Uh, before we break it down into the various categories and you'll see that total fund balance actually decreased about $178,000 from $840,000 to $661,000. When we look at the different types of fund balance, we have an unassigned, we have assigned, and then we have uh, a bar in the non-spendable category as well. So non-spendable is the least liquid. We can't generate, we can't sell an asset to, or, you know, collect on a receivable. It's not cash. Um, it's really uh, assets that are tied up into uh, either uh, something that we've already paid for, a prepaid type asset um, in this case, or uh, potentially an advance to another fund that we can't collect on in the near term. So in this case, um, there's about $65,000 a part of that is related to a prepay that's about 22,000 about 43,000 is an advance to tip number four if we move up the chart here we have an assigned fund balance amount which is about 215,000 at the end of 2020 compared to 385,000 last year so you'll see that went down quite a bit and the main reason for that is um a year ago um, there was, uh, um, the budget uh, was used, or fund balance was used to balance the budget for 2020. So we had uh, reported an assigned amount. So we knew that the fund balance was intending to go down. Um, the rest of that assigned fund balance relates to the payment and lift tax that the water and electric utility pays over to the city. It's intended to be used for the um, subsequent year. The unassigned fund balance is the um, amount of equity that's free and clear. Um, it's not tied up in any type of asset. It's available immediately to be used to pay current bills. Um, you'll see that that's about 381,000 as of the end of 2020 compared to about 436,000 at the end of last year. Uh, there's a summarized income statement in the middle here uh, of this particular page, and you'll see that the actual um, revenues and expenditures, um, when you, we compare them, there was a net decrease in fund balance of the 178000 as I mentioned before. The final budget had planned for that, um, and we'll get to that a little bit further. Uh, but you'll see that it was very, the, the actual was very close to that final budget. So it was very close to uh, what was it intended to happen. As we move on to the next page, um, this is kind of where we have a target fund balance range. So we can compare your fund balance amounts to your annual expenditures to come up with a ratio. So here is where we are comparing well, this green line on this particular graph is the actual 
um, unrestricted fund balance. So that is your assigned and your unassigned added together. And we compare that to your annual expenditures for the general fund. And we come up with this percentage. Um, the city actually has a policy where um, the goal is to have this percentage fall between 15 and 20%. So you'll see we have a red and a, a dark black line here that represents that range. And then um, the green line is where the city's actually been falling. So there was a concerted effort to um, use some of the fund balance that had been accumulated over the years to come closer to that um, acceptable range. Are there any questions so far on the fund balance? Okay, moving on, um, we'll talk about the general obligation debt outstanding. This is another um, major benchmark that um, is, is uh, indicative of, of the financial health of a municipality. Um, so here on this chart, we have a couple of lines. The dark um, black line is the general obligation debt capacity. And the green line is the actual general obligation debt outstanding that the city owes. So you may know that there is a statutory limitation um, as to how much GO debt can be outstanding for any municipality, and that equals 5% of the equalized value. Uh, so that does change over time. You'll see that over the course of the last five years, um, the actual debt capacity has increased from about 5.2 million to 6.1 million um, and the actual debt outstanding has kind of bumped around between 1.7 million and about 2.7 million so based on the the specific debt outstanding and the repayment schedules this uh, amount will go up and down at the top of this page we have a percentage which is 31 percent this is the current um ratio would we compare the unrestricted fund balance or i'm sorry when we compare the outstanding debt to the uh, uh debt capacity and so um i get a lot of questions as to is this good or or not and um generally if you're under 50 percent you're in really good shape um i see you know not to go into it but you know i see reasons to be over 50 percent and a lot of times those are justifiable but you know, just being under 50% in general is a really um, good place to be. Um, at the bottom of this particular page, there is a summary of the uh, debt outstanding. You'll see that the city has geo debt of about 1.9 million. The utilities have revenue debt of 487 million. Uh, there are some small um, notes payable out there for about three $3,000. Uh, to add up to the total debt outstanding. So relatively uh, low amount of debt outstanding across the city as a whole. Um, if we go here and, and take a look at the amount of principal and interest being paid um, on an annual basis compared to expenditures, we see that um, there has been a drop off uh, based on the uh, repayment schedule. And I believe that uh, this is a result of the, the TIFs, um, TIFs 2 and 3 closing recently. Um, that debt had been paid off uh, very recently as well. So um, the amount of debt outstanding has dropped as well as the annual payment. So this, this particular uh, chart just shows how um, our debt payments compare to our annual costs or expenditures as a whole. Um, here, 20% uh, is kind of the, the um, benchmark that we may want to stay under. Again, there's reasons to be higher than that, but um, you'll see that the, the city is well below that 20% mark at this time. So, um, 
So that between fund balance and geo debt outstanding, those are some of the main um, indicators that we take a look at. Um, the financial statements that um, have been issued are are quite lengthy. They have a lot of information in them um, regarding the general fund and the utilities, as well as the other funds that the city uh, administers. Um, I'm happy to take any questions on this information or the financial statements as a whole. Um, is there uh, any any questions I can uh, field at this time? Any questions from the group? Think we're good, Amanda. All right. Got a shy group. Hearing there. none. Um, I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate all of the hard work that Sean and his team have put in uh, as far as the annual audit goes. So um, everything has gone really well. So we really um, appreciate all of that assistance in, in getting this done on a timely basis. And bottom line, the city of Juneau is in good financial shape. Amanda? Yeah? Bottom line, City of Juneau is in good financial shape. <laughs> um, yes, so the general fund has some reserves on hand. Um, we're over the targeted um, percentage, so that is never a bad place to be. Um, and then the amount of debt outstanding is pretty low. So I would say, you know, it's important to, you know, keep uh, keep a good handle on the budget. Make sure that um, we're staying within the planned expenditures um, and, uh, and and thoughtfully um, planning out, you know, capital improvements, um, financing arrangements, and. Um, uh, obviously, just keeping general operations in check as well as we move forward. Thank you so, very yes. much. Any other questions? I'm not hearing any, Amanda. We want to thank you for your services. We've always had a good re relationship with Baker Tilly. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. You have a good evening. You too, thank you. Sean, anything else you want to touch upon that? Well, no, I think maybe covered it well. Um, and I feel like the team of the department heads kind of stayed good with the pandemic and everything else that was happening within the city. So um, just thank the department heads for staying within their budgets and everybody working together as a team. So well said. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts too, getting through the audit and accommodating them with everything they need. So next we got approvement of bills. Checks for 2005. Or, Checks for $205,133.27, vouchers of $1,595.75, electronic transfers of $192,306.88. So I'll entertain a motion for payment of bills. Second. Motion by Brown, second by Schuster. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Brown. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Evans. Aye. Booty. Aye. Groton. Aye. Shanks. Aye. <clears throat> Public appearances and citizens' comments regarding agenda items. Is there anyone here wishing to speak? You have a list right there. Oh, excuse me. We have Lila Miller here tonight, and I understand from what I heard from our deputy clerk, it's not about an agenda item, but I granted you permission to speak just because I think uh, it's something that the council may, may want to hear or know what's going on. So turn it over to you at this time. Do I need a stand or can I 
Yeah. You could stand over there, it would be helpful. The camera can catch it. <laughs> well, I'm here to talk about the city dump. In the last month, I went three times to the dump, and every time it was closed. Dumpsters were full, doors were locked, and it was during the normal hours when they should be open. Eight to noon on Saturdays, three to five on Wednesdays, you know, first and third, second and fourth, you know, whatever they are. So that's four times the dump is open a month. And I can't get one load to the dump. So I called City Hall and they directed me to Scott. I'm not sure who he is, but I think he's the guy that's usually down there. And well, he said that the budget was cut by $2,500. So my question is why? With people being home all last year, they did a lot of stuff around the house, probably a lot of extra house cleaning. So that created more junk. And then he tells me that there's people bringing four and five loads a day when it's open into the dump. And another why. I mean, that dump is for everybody. It's not just for one person to, you know, empty their warehouse or whatever. You know, if you've got that much stuff, you should get a, your own dumpster. You know, I pay for that dumpster. Everyone else that's a resident here pays for that dumpster. I was snarkily told it was a privilege, not a right. But I pay for it, so it's not really a privilege. It's a paid-for um, service that I should be able to use. I normally generate maybe two, maybe three loads a year on my little four by eight trailer that I take down there and, and throw away and I recycle the cardboard and the metal and follow the rules and no lawn clippings or anything like that and I still can't get it in there. I mean, I went the first Saturday in April about quarter after 11. It was closed up, dumpsters were full, but the cardboard wasn't full and I had a great big bunch of cardboard to recycle and the first of May it never even opened and I think the Wednesday before the first of May it never even opened because the dumpsters were full and Scott's telling me well he can't afford four or five times to empty the dumpsters because his budget doesn't allow that. Um, we had a problem a few years back I don't know if you remember that there was an excessive amount of mattresses being dumped off at the dump, 10, 15 mattresses every day that it was open. And they weren't from this community. And they finally figured out how to solve that problem by writing people's names down, proving that they're residents of this town. Now, if someone has four or five loads of garbage four times a month, where do they live? Because this, this is a city issue that they should be closing down their resident. <laughs> but I'm, I'm asking for solutions and I'm offering some. Uh, one would be to limit residents one or two loads per time it's open. Reevaluate the budget that's allowed there because why was $2,500 reduced from that budget. I mean, yeah, everybody's got to cut costs, but if we're financially good, then we should take care of all of our, all of our issues, and, and garbage is one of them. So I guess that's the only thing I have to say. <laughs> this has been an ongoing issue there, Lila. We've, uh, we have implemented a program now where along with that sign-in sheet, the, the attendant is going to document how many times you come in a month. We'll put a sign up that says two loads max per day. Well, <laughs> we've, got, we've got four available days in any given month, two Wednesdays and two Saturdays to drop off that debris. What Scott told you is true. Most communities don't offer that service. It is a very nice service to be able to provide to our citizens. But we, sus we suspect that we've got junk coming in from all other communities because people, you know, hey, brother-in-law, bring it in. I can get rid of it for you and what oh, have yeah. you. And it's not out of the ordinary. Within three days, those dumpsters are filled up to the top. Oh, I realize that. You know, we do. Cre everyone creates junk, and you, and you should have a couple of times every month that it does get emptied. 
But if some person, if one, if one resident is bringing five loads, he's filling up a dumpster. That's a thousand bucks. That's right. He should be paying for that. That's you know. what we're trying to implement now is that you will be turned away if you have been there in exactly. a given month. Hey, you got your dump for May, you wait until June now. Hey. So we haven't actually acted upon that at a, at a public works meeting, but we will be meeting and that will be one of the items on the agenda. Dave is the chair for public works. Anything you want to add to that, Dave? Yeah, it's when we enacted that the they closed the dump it was the fact that then the city workers, otherwise they'd dump it all on the ground. Everybody would come in and dump it on the ground. Now we're paying the city workers during the day to fill the dumpster when it comes empty and fill it out. So we're, we're double paying. There have been times where so, I went to the dump, it was open, there was no one there watching anything. Well, there, there was no, there there was no to notebook to sign there. in, nothing. There was nobody there. The gates were both open and most of them were overstuffed already. I think that's on a rare occasion. I, it might be. Um, we will actually bring that up as well, Dave. Put that in your notes to make sure that anytime the posted hours of having that, that dump there. open, uh, there will be somebody there to record who's coming and going. And uh, like I said, uh, We've got no control over it, you know, other than limiting, limiting the number of dumps that each resident can have. So. I think that's on there now, isn't it? You, know, you can only come down once. No, well, the, I, I did drive by. It, it, there was a sign. It's gone. The yeah. eight to twelve sign is gone too. Yeah, once a day though. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah you've right. got four, four times right. in the from April to October a month to bring garbage. I mean, if you're, if you're generating four trailer folds of dump or pickup trucks, whatever you use, you're making a lot of waste. <laughs> and it's funny, I probably get down there maybe once every other month, and it seems like it's always the same people dumping well, too, you know. So. Take a drive tomorrow night, I bet the dumpsters are empty today, I bet you they'll be full, and, and yeah. by Saturday they won't, won't be emptied. And the worst part about it is uh, if that continues, then everybody suffers. We eliminate the service, and you figure out how to get rid of it, you know, whatever. And that's something that we don't want to do. We want to be able to provide, provide that service, but we got to just monitor it a little bit better and, and make sure that we can tr control what's going in there. The city of Watertown, they have limitations, and after you exceed the limitations, you pay an extra fee. Menominee Falls, you pay per pound for your garbage. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your brush and your leaves and stuff, you've got a punch card, so you can only take your brush and leave so many times. So everybody else regulates and limits how much garbage you can, you can refuse. And, and if they really have that much, they could sit and cut it up and put it in their weekly dumpsters. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming and making the council aware of what's going on. The people that are on the Public Works Committee will know it. <laughs> But yeah, we're here to serve, and uh, we wish more people would come to our meetings. So. All right, thank okay, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Eric Spitz, virtually. Eric? He had to drop off. Excuse me? He had to drop off. He had to so drop off. Yep, he had to leave. All right. I'm just wondering if public work can look at, too, I don't know how long our contract is for the dumpsters, you know, that we're currently in. So maybe see and have them rebid out. When is our contract up, Sean? Didn't you say we got another year? 2022. Um, well, we can have as many dumpsters as we want, Jane. We just pay for them, pay for the extra. I'm not there. saying have more. What I'm saying is um, get bids, com compare the prices. Yeah. Just because we have a company for our garbage and recycling for residential pickup. I don't think that means we necessarily have to go with that company that, for the dumpsters. That is absolutely for, true. I think there's cheaper alternatives out there. Could be. Could be. Put that on your list to discuss also, David, for the next meeting. Right. Well, you'll be there anyways. <laughs> well, and then, this is my other thing, too, and I know I brought this up before. It can be discussed at Public Works, but, you know, like Lila was saying, if we have cardboard, and the cardboard... Why can't we allow people to say, hey, our dumpsters are full, but I have cardboard. Could I at least just dump off my cardboard? Or could I at least just dump off my oil? That cardboard box gets full, too. 
But it was, there's room. <laughs> Most times they say there's room and they're not even allowed in because that other dumpster's full. Why, why can't we allow them at least to get rid of their cardboard or what there is room for? Because they're not, they're not there for the rest of the, the day. Where I'm sure they're, they're still getting paid from 8 till noon, even though they're, they close at 10.30. So they could monitor the cardboard or the metal and just state that that's the only things that are available until noon. And I know that punch card system, I brought that up a while ago, that I think there should be a punch card system. Well, even if you don't want to go to the punch card system, he's got a notebook, he writes everybody's name down. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time you write your name down, if he's coming back again, you like check his license, you check the list. If you're not on the list, yeah, you can dump. If you're on the list, it's like, yeah, you True. used your that's turn. that's a good alternative. <clears throat> yeah. It's free, I mean, you're not, you don't even have to invest in the card. Okay, spend enough time on that. Appreciate you coming. Moving on, reports of officials, Mayor Resolution 8, 2021, mayoral apartment appointments to the Recreation Committee. Um, this appointee has elected not to re-up. She's spent several, several terms on the, on the Recreation Committee, so I am in... Uh, seeking a, a replacement for Julie. I want to thank Julie for all the years she did spend on the Recreation Committee. Moving on, Clerk Treasurer, anything? Not at the moment. Written reports, any questions on the building permit reports, police department report, Juno Fire and Rescue report, or the Juno EMS report? No questions, reports of committees, commissions, and boards, library report, Jeanette Thran. Okay, before the meeting, I handed out some chocolate. Just a reminder, uh, Lisa uh, Bohr retired, and her last day after 24 years of service at the library was this past Friday. So we've got a few parting gifts left over, and they call my name at the library, so we must get them out. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, please congratulate her. Uh, it was a rough week last week. We, we will miss her. Uh, we are excited about our new adult services librarian, Carla Zimmerman. Her first official day um, in that role was yesterday. So, um, moving on. You can open your chocolate if, you, if that helps with this. <laughs> uh, just five brief things I want to talk about. First, at the end of May, um, an exciting virtual program will be offered in an effort with three other Monarch libraries. Uh, on May 26th, you may not know this, Dan, but now you do. It's National Paper Airplane Day. Oh, boy, it is. Off. Write that down. <laughs> Discuss that at the Plan Commission. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, we are partnering with Mayville, Beaver Dam, and West Bend to bring the world record holder for the longest um, flight. flight of a paper airplane to us virtually. He, we will have kits available next Monday with official paper airplane paper. It's not just like this. <laughs> and um, he will take us through how to fold those and just some some great connections to aerodynamic science on a level that can be understood. This isn't just for kids. So if you at 4.30 on May 26th want to learn how to fold a paper airplane that can go the farthest, um, you know, maybe, maybe you could win some money somehow, you know, got a little side gig going. <laughs> anyway, um, we are thankful that the Friends of the Juno Public Library has paid for that sponsorship and, um, and we're sharing the cost with those three other libraries. Uh, I brought this balloon. It's kind of like a teaser. I can't tell you what it's all about <laughs> other than um, it's got paw prints on it. And it has to do with something available at the library that I can't speak about on video. Um, but it's a partnership we have with 
a place where a lot of animals are kept in captivity and you can actually go and view them uh, without telling you the specifics. Come in and learn about how you can visit said location for free. Um, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> and um, I brought my phone up because I wanted to show you that we have a brand new Monarch to Go app. Our first version was released in 2020. I used it, I loved it, I thought it will never get better, and it has. Um, completely new, if you have an iOS item, an Apple device, it should have upgraded, if you already had the app, it should have upgraded automatically. If you have an Android device, you do need to delete that app and reinstall the new app. It's free, and one of my favorite features is I can tap that, and there's my barcode, Dan. If I lose my library card, it's right there on the thing that I got in my pocket 24-7 um, almost, So or left at home, exactly. So make sure you download this app. If you never downloaded the first one, now's the time to do it. You can manage your loans, you can request items, and this is with you pretty much all the time. Uh, if you need assistance, we are fully capable at the library to help you get that on your device. I am wearing a shirt that says Tales and Tales, and this is our summer reading program theme. This is a theme that many libraries throughout the United States embrace. And we are totally going with, um, we're going full bore animal uh, programming. In the month of June, all of our programming is going to be focused with animals that are either domestic or farm. And then in the month of July, we're going to focus on wild animals. So if we bring in performers, or if we have virtual performances, we'll be staying in those, uh, under those themes. I brought with me um, kind of an incentive. Dan, you're going to be my helper here today. Um, the first hundred people to sign up for our summer reading program will get a limited edition color changing cup with the Juno Public Library logo on it, which we just adopted last year in 2020. So Dan, I have a cold beverage. Magic Go magic. ahead and pour that in and wait for the magic. How much? Whatever you're gonna drink. Whatever you're gonna drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I know. Cool. So anyway, now we've got a color changing cup. Uh, we only have 100, so the first 100 will get this and a few other prizes. It gets darker eventually. Be more impressed. Come on. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing that we're doing this year for the first 50 kids, ages 0 to 12, when they register, they'll get a badge book. This is a sticker book where they can record their reading and there's activities in the back. And all of this is tied to the Beanstack app where they can manage um, their summer reading progress. They can earn tickets or prizes that will be issued at the end of the summer. It's turning more and more blue. It's, it's so really cool. cool. Oh my. So, um, <laughs> Summer reading launches on June 7th, but you can pre-register starting June 1st. And last but not least, uh, I have it under good authority that the Dodge County Fair is actually happening this year. And um, the Monarch Library System will have a booth at the fair. Uh, with that said, the fair board gives one organization, a nonprofit, uh, a free rental for their booth space. And the Monarch Library System is the recipient of that this year. So come on out, visit us at the booth. An exciting thing that I'm 
really encouraged uh, to promote is the fact that Beaver Dam Public Library is joining Monarch. Uh, the projected start date is September 1st. So that will be fun in August when the fair is going on to be talking to them saying, hey, your Beaver Dam card will now work at all Monarch libraries. So that's exciting. It, um, you'll only have to carry one card if you're a user of the Juno Library and the Beaver Dam Library. So I'll leave that with you, Dan. Thank you. Come and register on June 1st. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks for that. It's beer flavored. Oh, <laughs> I did it. Jeanette, we presented Lisa with her phantom plaque. <laughs> I'm assuming you reviewed our presentation? I did. I did. It, it was quite humorous. Oh, we did all right then. <laughs> yeah, you did all right. Okay. Yes. And she got her, she her got, real plaque. She got her plaque. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions for our library director tonight? You're always entertaining, Jen. <laughs> Next, we have plan commission report. David. We did not meet. We didn't meet? Finance. We did meet. Um, one of the first things we discussed in our meeting on last Tuesday night was the uh, American Rescue Plan Committee that we would like to put into being. Um, the federal government is sending money our direction, and we need to be able to spend that money wisely. Uh, the Finance Committee believes that uh, under the uh, program that we need to have some other input, some outside input, not just those on our city council to help us see things sometimes a little bit differently. They may not come to our meetings, but they may see things and be have that input. So we made a motion to um, get a committee together, not to exceed six people, to be brought together after we get some direction from the federal government exactly how those funds can be spent. So we're asking for citizens, uh, business. Um, there will be some uh, government officials, uh, our city officials, that will be participating to that. And it still will have to come back through the council as a whole in the end. But that was one of our discussions. We talked about our additional projects for uh, 2021 borrowing, and we will have a resolution on that shortly. Um, we talked about the quarterly financials. Sean has done a great job of presenting that to us and helping us to understand where we're at, as well as our annual um, year-end financials. We had a draft of what Amanda presented to us this evening for our, for our time together on, at that meeting. Um, let me get my paper clip off of here. Um, we talked about work on the county on West Street and the resurfacing and the cost for that. Um, have asked the county to look at that because they had given us a cost a couple years ago and it came in more than double to fix it this year. So we're asking some questions on that of what's going to happen with that. We discussed the sale of the old city hall and we'll have a re resolution on that. We were also asked by the county if we would help with the cleanup of a parcel that they will have the option to take over due to um, tax delinquency on that property. Um, we don't have enough information to make a determination what we're going to do, so we are working to get a meeting together with them for discussion purposes only. Um, at this point in time, we, we do believe that there is a lot of cleanup that would have to be done and not sure it's in the city's best interest, but want to have that conversation with them still. And then... Um, we did have a closed session, and I believe that's about it for this point in time. So we will move to Resolution 9, 2021, approve future projects from the additional 2021 borrowing. <clears throat> Whereas the Finance Committee has reviewed the $866,350 remaining in our borrowing for 2021, and whereas the Finance Committee recommends the remaining funds be distributed as follows, $550,000 to Public Works for street projects, $100,000 to Recreation Department for a splash pad, 
$85,000 to the fire department for air packs and cylinders, $125,000 to public works for a street sweeper. The balance of $6,350 will be put in a contingency fund for future projects to be determined. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juno accepts the aforementioned recommendations passed by the Common Council of the City of Juno this 11th day of May, 2021. I move for passage of Resolution 09-2021. Second. Motion by Brown, second by Schuster. Further discussion? Wasn't this, where did the, uh, the street sweeper is 200,000? That was for a new one. He brought some bids in for uh, used ones. Um, and I believe the middle of the two was 125 after trading. So, okay. He, he has the money allocated for a street sweeper. He can now go shop it and even find other options as well besides the two that he was presented to us as well. So if he can find a 2015 model with low miles and it hits in that budget area, you know, mm -hmm. by all means, go get it kind of thing. But okay. we know there's an option out there that would fit in that price point. What year is ours again? 1996, 1993, somewhere there? 93, I think it was Yes. One of, one of the considerations with that street sweeper was the number of hours and the number of miles on it. Okay. He was looking at both of those issues and not knowing the history behind it. If it has lots of miles, is it because it was used in a bigger city? And so, you know. Yeah, I got that other number from the public works right. units. Yep. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That was originally said, you can't have that money for <laughs> so. I just wonder where the extra money would come yeah. from otherwise. Yeah. yeah. The, the numbers that are here also, um, any monies that are not used for those sweet street, for those projects, whatever is listed here comes back and will get reallocated and we will have two years to allocate all of these funds to projects. So if it's not used completely within that place for that specific reason, it comes back. So if, if he were to find a a uh, street sweeper for $120,000, $5,000 comes back and will be reallocated to a different place. It is not for him to decide or for any of the departments to decide, hey, you gave me an extra five, I want to, <laughs> it's got to come back. What about the street projects? There is a five-year plan out there, Dick, in regards to projects that need to be done. And some of them we don't think are going to last until they were scheduled on there. And when we first discussed this borrowing, it was we need to do these street projects, whether it's grinding and relays or chip sealing or um, pea gravel, whatever it is from that way. And we look at, looked at those and said, what do we need to have move forward at that point in time and which projects do we think? But we don't want to pick those as a finance committee. So this $550,000 is going back to Public Works and you determine, you go look at those streets and say, is it going to make it till 2027? Do you, do you really think it's going to make it till... That's what we're asking rather than us making that okay. determination, saying here's your money. You decide which streets, but use it wisely. Okay. Knowing full well there will be other street projects in the future, but the majority of those um, smaller dollar ones we figured we could put in into our normal budget process and still maintain our roads, which is something we haven't done. So we're trying to be helpful by fronting some of that. But neither did we want to have all of them fall at one time. Yeah. Okay. So. Thanks for that explanation. Any other questions? If you're wondering about the air packs for the fire department, that's kind of a mandated thing. We There's a shelf life on those air packs and we're getting to the end of that shelf life that we have to replace those. So. Other than that, no other questions, roll call vote, please. Brown. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Evans. Aye. Booty. Aye. Groton. Aye. Shanks. Aye. <clears throat> Resolution 9, 2021 is passed. We have been working to sell the old city hall. Resolution 10, 2021, approve the sale of city property. Whereas the Finance Committee has negotiated and reviewed the offer to purchase the old City Hall building located at 150 Miller Street, parcel number 241-1115-2232-004, 
And whereas the Finance Committee recommends the sale of the property at a price of $105,000 with no contingencies, with the closing of the property be property to be June 1st, 2021. And whereas the Finance Committee recommends approval of a request that was made by the purchaser to keep the council table, chairs, office furniture, and to have the electric, electric upgraded. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation. Passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of May, 2021. I move for resolution of 10, 2021. Second. Motion by Brown, second by Grattan. Further questions or comments? Who is the sale to? Do you know the name? John? We do have that. Um, give me a second. They work with the health facilities. It'll actually be a clinic type thing for mental health, counseling, et cetera, et cetera. Um, big bonus, it'll go back on the tax rolls. So. Is it, that's the group that we talked about last month? At the organizational yep. meeting. Right. They countered back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And do we have an idea how much electrical upgrades will be? I mean, is that That's good? That's just a panel. Just get yeah. rid of the fuse oh, box down there. Okay. It's not, no, we're not, know. we're not rewiring the city all. <laughs> well, so that's why less, I asked. Less than a thousand. <laughs> less than a thousand. Okay, yes. I'm good with that then. And all those beautiful paintings, do they realize what they're getting? <laughs> I thought you took them home. <laughs> Did you look there? There's still um, some there. There's I took there what was there is mine home. Okay. There is still things that we will have to clean out. Those things that belong to City <laughs> Hall, oh, whether we like them or want them. The wall space here. That will be. <laughs> the wall space the basement yeah, too. We should put some up here. <laughs> we will do that if they're appropriate. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? You, well, you I'm, can give that to me. Home. You can get it to me sometime. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Brown. Aye. Grant. Aye. Evans. Aye. Moody. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Shanks. Aye. Resolution 10, 2021 has passed. Resolution 11, 2021 has to do with the CDBG um, dash ED grant that we um, had the public hearing for earlier. Resolution authorizing submission of a community development block grant application relating to the City of Juno's participation in the Community Development Block Grant dash Economic Development CDBG dash ED program. Whereas federal monies are available under the Community Development Block Grant program administered by the Wisconsin Department of Administration, the DOA, Division of Housing, Energy and Community Resources, DEHCR, for the purpose of providing economic development activities. And whereas after public meeting and due consideration, the Common Council has recommended that an application be submitted to DEHCR for the following project. Equipment loan to automated pet care products. And whereas it is necessary for the Common Council to approve the preparation and filing of an application for the city to receive funds from this program, and whereas the Common Council has reviewed the need for the proposed project and the benefit to be gained from there. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council does hereby approve and authorize the preparation and filing of an application for the above named project and that the Mayor is hereby authorized to sign all necessary documents on behalf of the City and that the authority is hereby granted the City Council to take the necessary steps to prepare and file the application for funds under this program in accordance with this resolution, be it further resolved that if awarded, the City Council agrees to accept the award. The award passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of May, 2021. I move for passage of resolution 11, 2021. Second. Motion by Brown, second by Foodie. Any further discussion? Questions or comments? John, you want to touch briefly on it? Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Evening, everybody. Uh, my name is John Duran, Vice President of Manufacturing for Automated Pet Care Products. Um, we're excited about this program. As you may or may not know, we are started groundbreaking on our new addition on the site. It's a, now it's a 165,000 square foot addition. 
we're putting up with a planned addition to our employment roles of between 150 and 170 people. With right now, we're at about 220 employees. So we're gonna swell that to almost 400 people by the end of, projected by, the, by 2024. So um, what we're doing with this block grant, this will help fund a lot of our internal efforts. Uh, we're gonna be automating a lot of uh, activities. We're going internal racking, automated vehicles to transport product back and forth. Um, just things to help us run our operations. And part of the continued community development block grant is it's targeted for low and middle income families, which is who the people we're looking to employ. Most of our workers, this is their first real job they've had, other than fast food or something. So we're taking those people and giving them a chance to grow with our company, make a career, and that's why we're looking. The automation things that we can really give people a start and help move them from being a, okay, I'm just going somewhere to do something all day to I can be here for 10 or 20 years and make a career out of it. And this, right now, uh, with the additions we put with the building, this addition is about $9.6 million investment, Juno. In the last, that'll cap on, in the past 24 months, an almost $12 million investment we made in the city. Between the expansion last year, our current office renovation, and now the new building. So we're really excited to be here. We're excited this is a great place to be. Um, we want to make that, we want to come back in a couple years and have another building going up awesome. in our plan. So we thank you for your support on this and we look forward to uh, doing more with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, anything you have to add? Um, I think John pretty much covered it. I mean, from my point of view, we've been working with MSA and Dave Rasmussen um, in regards to administering this for them. Um, definitely happy to get this rolling, allow the uh, employees to come in and be a part of our great community here in Juneau. So. Thank you. Well, further discussion, roll call vote, please. Do we have a motion and a second? Yes. Brown. Brown and Foodie. I apologize. Brown. Aye. Foodie. Aye. Evans. Aye. Grunton. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Shanks. Aye. Resolution 12, 2021 is passed. Yes. Oh, excuse me, I got checks ahead of myself. <laughs> excuse me, Resolution 11, 2021 is passed. They want this next one too. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution 12, 2021. This is a first in our community to do this because we haven't had a lot of new businesses come in with the amount of business that we believe automated pet care will bring into our city, the development that they've done, um, the expansion that they've done and where they look to go. Um, they have come to us and said, would you consider giving us- um, Cheryl, this is, this, is a, this is a different one. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. This is for the CDBGED grant. Grant for the yeah. application, yes. the agreement. Okay. You were rolling so well at You were. <laughs> <laughs> John's chest was puffing up. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't even met John yet. John, it's nice to meet you. Okay, I'm sorry. I've got the wrong thing here. Um, this is resolution 12. Let me just read it then. Approve automated pet care products community development block grant developers agreement. Where's the common council approved to act as the intermediary between the state of Wisconsin and automated pet care products with a re resolution 11, 2021 for the application administration of the community development block grant economic development. And whereas the Common Council has approved to hire MSA Engineering to apply and administer the grant, and whereas Auto Pet Care Products, as outlined in Exhibit A, has agreed to reimburse the city for expenses related to the application and administration of the grant, and agrees to waive all responsibility of the city should the terms of the grant agreement not be met. And where it is, whereas it is recommended that Common Council accept the Community Development Block Grant Developers Agreement as shown in Exhibit A, now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of May, 2021. I move for passage of Resolution 12, 2021. <coughs> Motion by Brown, second by Shanks. Any further discussion? Anything you want to add, Sean? 
Yeah, this is just the agreement for the city to kind of act as an intermediate person in between the state of Wisconsin and Auto Pet Cares. Um, the grant is supposed to run through the city and to the private business, so this is just an agreement between Auto Pets and the city that they're going to help with the payment to MSA for the administration, and that should the state demand any monies be paid back, that they would not hold the city responsible for that payment. We're just the conduit. Correct. Any other questions? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Brown. Aye. Shanks. Aye. Evans. Aye. Booty. Aye. Groton. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Resolution 12, 2021 has passed. I want to thank you, John, for appearing tonight and offering that brief explanation or what have you. We are happy to partner with the auto pet company and next time around Cheryl will be able to read the right resolution. <laughs> We're going for you Sean, are we missing that extra one that we No, not yet. No, that's not. Okay. Okay. That hasn't been developed yet. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking the same thing. That you're off to your running start. Keep that thought process. <laughs> next, next, next time. There will be better news to come <laughs> though, John, so hey, <laughs> if all goes. I apologize. <laughs> Anything else from finance tonight? Oh yes, yeah, we, we got one more. Yeah, one more. Yeah. Got one more. I do have a question on this one because is it when it says decorative street lights here, what makes them decorative street lights? They're aluminum aluminum poles rather than steel they poles rather than decorative. Decorative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There. Otherwise, it's a wooden pole with a steel arm hanging off. The, <laughs> off of this is the norm most decorative poles, I think. Excuse me? That's the norm, is the decorative. For, for improved streets, yeah. yes. I, I guess I think I decorative yeah. is something much fancier yeah, like we, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they have garland pretty pre <laughs> strong. And I'll tell you what, they don't hold that, that, that Christmas summer. banner. They're Christmas. not strong enough for that. They're not strong enough for Okay, on that note, resolution 13, 2021. Resolution to remove all electrical poles and replace with decorative street lights on South and North Highland Street and East Oak Street. Whereas the City Common Council requires the Juno Electric Company to remove all electrical poles within the Highland and East Oak Street Road construction project in the year 2021-2022. And whereas the Common Council requires the Juno Electric Utility and all other companies, individuals who currently utilize these poles to move all wiring underground. And whereas the Common Council requires the Juno Electric Utility to place the, replace the poles with decorative lighting at a cost not to exceed as outlined in Exhibit A. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of May, 2021. I move for passage of Resolution 13, 2021. Second. Motion by Brown, second by Granton. Any further discussion? My only question is the interdepartmental charges back and forth. We still charge each other administrative fee? I believe so. Maybe that's a short question. question. I believe so. Yes. Do you always have? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that's always been done. So, um, correct. We did get a little pushback from one of the, one of the companies that were, want, were on our polls. That's the reason for this. Uh, they wouldn't take it, a directive from the utility. They had, it had to come from the city. In other words, the directive that would, hey, we're improving this street. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we, they were going to steadfast that they were staying on those poles, so we'd have a street, an improved street, still have wooden poles on it. So this was something that uh, Nick did some research on and found out as long as it was directed by the city and not the utility, it was okay. Then they didn't have any pushback anymore. You know, so. Utilities owned by the city, but I mean, here's the case where you know they're separate entities, and uh, you know, all they needed was a directive in writing that, which we are now through form of resolution to present to them, and it would be taken care of. So, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> At, go ahead, I'm sorry. At the uh, commission meeting the RNA, we talked about the height of the poles. Yes. And we talked about 35 foot. 30. 30 versus 25. 25 is what you'd see on Mayfair, and 30 is what you see on the through fair streets. So this is going to be 30 foot, because we talked about 25 foot. 
I don't know what he figured. I think he figured 30s in there, but they, if we elected to go 25s, we give him that direction because that is our standard. We have a standard in residential streets as the short, little bit shorter poles, five foot, and the main through fares as the taller ones. Okay, so that could, 30 that could possibly change. Yeah, this could be a little bit less if he's got the 30s figured in. Okay. 30 foot pole. So yeah. not to exceed what he's given quoted. Right. So I just have one question on this. The estimate that's in Exhibit A is only for Highland Street Lighting, but yet the resolution is for Highland and East Oak, but we don't even have a quote yet for East Oak, so why are we approving those? Well, there's a leg of East Oak that's included in this Highland Street project, the block between Highland and Depot Street. Okay, I just saw the bottom of the exhibit that says East Oak Street to be determined and approved in 2022. There is one pole on Oak Street, if I recall, right down there. Okay. Right by the co so we're, co we're just, property, just we're, this side of the rec trail. And that's included in, in this yeah. estimate? So that's yep. okay. I just want to make sure that we're not approving something we don't have a quote for yet. Right. So. Well, and the resolution you're approving is for them to take next year when we do East Oak Street to take the lights down and replace them with. We'll get a new quote for that at that right. point in time. Yep. Like right. I said, this is basically we have a pole attachment agreement with cable company, with phone companies, and we might even have a third one on there. I don't know, but uh, here's the case where they needed this resolution so that that the the city was was demanding this yeah. rather than the electric utility. Okay. So I just want to make sure I was clarifying that. We're not approving something we don't have any idea what the and by, are. by doing this, then they go joint trenching costs with our electric company Good. when it comes down to running the cables. So. Okay. No other questions? Roll call vote, please. Brown. Aye. Drum. Aye. Evan. Aye. Foodie. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Shakes. Aye. Resolution 13, 2021 has passed. Anything else in finance room? I do not have anything else. Personnel. We did not have a standard personal meeting, however, last night we did have a joint city personnel and utility personnel meeting. Uh, that meeting went into closed session. Um, our findings from that closed session, we did suspend our wastewater treatment plant supervisor um, pending termination. We will have a, another meeting in two weeks. That will be another joint utility personnel and city personnel meeting um, where we will conclude that. Anything else, Paul? Uh, that is it for personnel. Any questions for Paul? Moving on, public safety. Yes, we had a meeting. Um, Dave Beal passed out his monthly report. Um, he did have a drug take, take back Saturday, April 24th at the public safety building. They take um, old prescription or used prescriptions. And there is a, a box in there it's accessible 24-7 at, at the public safety building if anybody wants to drop some off there anytime they can. Uh, the one new squad car is in service and the second one should be sometime in the middle of May so it, it you can pretty close here. And then we had a discussion which I have a, a resolution on a sidewalk cafe ordinance. A lot of talk on the bars of town having sidewalk cafes. You want to get people out on the sidewalks and get them out more out in the open. And Christina from the 1850s said she saw in Colorado what they call a park parklet. It's a little bit of a structure you put out in the park and where your cars park. So we're not sure if that, you know, how many space that would take up. So we kind of kicked that around a little bit. They'd have to be removed in the winter, put a forklift and stored somewhere. So we're not sure if we want to do that. A little more talk on that. where we'd store these things and so forth on that. Like I said, there is a resolution on that later. And with EMS, Dan Zank, he had to leave for an ambulance call, but he did, did say the, the new auto pulse machine is in service. If they have a call where you need CPR, there's a machine, they put the person in it and actually does the compressions by itself. People don't have to do it, so you don't get tired. And it works very nice, and they're working on a second one. He said that works very nice, and the little demonstration he did for us, yeah, it works very well. Uh, 
Chief Nindman was not there for the fire, but he, they said they had five total calls for the last month. And then Dave Beal again with the emergency government director. Uh, April was Tornado Awareness Month. They test the sirens. And he said a lot of times people say they can't hear them in their house, but they're really not meant to be heard in your house. He said if you should have a radio or some sort. I mean, a lot of times if you're close to it, you can hear it. There's three sirens in Juneau. But you should, you know, have a weather radio or something in your house also. And you should also check your basement for a safe spot and have a flashlight and supplies handy if needed. And that was pretty much our meeting. And then I had the one resolution. Resolution 14, 2021. Approve the creation of a pilot program to allow sidewalk cafes for one year. Whereas the Public Safety Committee has reviewed the application, conditions, and restrictions for businesses to apply for a sidewalk cafe permit. And whereas the Public Safety Committee recommends to establish a pilot program for one year to see how much interest is generated and to work out any conditions or restrictions that may not have seen at this time. And whereas the Public Safety Committee recommends a fee of $15 to cover administration costs and process the applications. And whereas the brochures and applications as shown in Exhibit A will be sent out to individual businesses to promote the sidewalk, sidewalk cafe. Now therefore it be resolved, the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation Passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of May, 2021. I move for passage of Resolution 14, 2021. Second. Okay. Motion by Schuster, second by Foody. So they kind of want to, you know, go go a year, see what happens if they, a lot of people are interested in it, or if it, instead of an ordinance, they want to start with a resolution in case we got to change something. So. That makes sense. How many businesses are interested in this already? I think the 1850s in the in the um, bowling alley. Okay. Right now, I think. I know previously the 1850s is one that had sparked this many years yeah. ago. Yep. So. Right. Yeah. And sometimes they can just put some chairs out there and a couple tables, and they can bring them back in at night. Yep. I know she had talked about those park lots. We're not sure, you know, if that'll work. I mean, you hate to lose parking spaces out there. So, and you gotta, you know, have room for people to walk on the sidewalk too. If people are walk, you know, they can walk and stuff. They can't be interfered by tables and stuff. So we're just going to do a pilot program this year and see see how it goes, I guess. Awesome. Those parklets, what John was saying, they're kind of um, built on pallets. Skids. Yeah. yeah. So they'd be, you know, taking up the parking spots, you know, but it, it was a neat concept. But. Yeah, they said they could take up like three spaces, you know, and, you know, where they've seen them in Colorado might have bigger streets and more parking, you know. Like we're kind of restricted in Juno for parking, so. If every business along yeah. along the main street wanted one, we would have no parking. So where would your right. where would your customers <laughs> park? Exactly. <that's laughs> we're kind of thinking that way. Right it's got a really big anyways. parking lot in the Dodge County building. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's true. I mean, uh, we're kind of spoiled. Everybody wants to park right in front of the place they're doing business yeah. with. But yeah. uh, we're not hurting for parking. I mean, oh. you, know, you, yeah. you got to walk. 200 feet, you know, is really what it boils down to. We got ample parking yeah. after hours in the county lots and what have you there. And uh, even if they consume the whole side of the street, you still got the opposite side of the street and those lots. Yeah. So, you know, we're not we're not really hurting at all. I, I agree. I've been down there a number of times in the evenings where it would be, you know, bar dinner time and there's only, what, three bars open at the moment downtown anyway? Yeah. So there's plenty of parking, in my opinion, to be able to give both of those two places three parking spots and hopefully boost some more business mm -hmm. and maybe we can get some more, you know, restaurants, bars to start opening up because we'll see yeah. how busy it is down there. Great, so that's why they want to just do it one year, see how it goes. So yeah, that'd be great. Go from there. I, I do think we need to keep in mind that there are other businesses that are not bars though, right. whether it be the laundromat or a law office or you know, whatever parking. that needs parking as well that may yeah. be open at yeah, absolutely. so yeah, because the pilot program doesn't include the park lead. Right. No, it does right. not. No. That's a good point. But yeah. what Jane was starting to talk about, they're built so that they're at the level of your curb. Oh, okay. So you would maintain, they would sit in the parking spot, butt up against the curb. You'd maintain your ADA accessibility onto them and what have you. And 
Dick brought up a valid point too, you know, what he saw in the illustration. They just got a little wooden railing up there. And, yeah, and they're not going to stop a vehicle safe. from crashing right. through them or whatever. Because you're closer to the traffic, you know, when you're in right. the parking stalls. So. Yeah. I mean, we've got a couple of businesses downtown that are very proactive and, and want to improve our downtown. And I think this is a step in the right direction. I, last time this was reviewed, several years ago, the liability issue, and then we found out since then that rather than the city owning two-thirds of the sidewalk, the 15-foot depth sidewalk, we only own about a third of it. So that's the, the third that we want to maintain for the five-foot through fare for people passing by and able to walk on it. So I think you, you see this in every other community. Why not in Juneau? Be a little more progressive than what we have been in the past. So. And still cover our liabilities as well too. This would be an extension of premise. Um, both of the tavern keepers that are interested in that said they already have insurance right now that covers within 100 feet of their property or the radius of their property. So you know the, there's already insurance coverage in place on their, their present insurance even without having this outdoor seating. So. No other questions? I'll call the question or uh, call a roll, please. Schuster? Aye. Cootie? Aye. Brown? Aye. Evans? Aye. Brown? Aye. Shanks? Aye. Resolution 1421 is passed. Anything else from public or from all guys. Public safety? Okay, public works. We did not meet. Cable TV, Jan. Cable TV. <clears throat> we are always up for new ideas for recording. Ideas that we discussed was getting Scott Carpenter to do another video, maybe on the leaf site, what's allowed there, what's not, um, area of the dumpster that was talked about tonight, and recyclable area. Um, maybe have a report with Sean. You guys don't have that special elections though, do you? No. Um, record the Legion Memorial Day observance, and perhaps something can be recorded concerning the community gardens. The 2021 budget looks to be in great shape for this year so far, and that is about it. So anybody with recording ideas, please let us know. Good report, Jane. <clears throat> Any questions for Jane? Move on, CDA, we did not have a meeting. Recreation committee. We did have a meeting, a very lengthy meeting. Um, there was some unfortunate drama, miscommunication, based around the Rage Soccer Program in Juneau where something was said to the wrong person and it just spiraled downhill uh, because, you know, we, um, our rec director was not aware that he was supposed to be making certain meetings uh, for our Rage Soccer Program, uh, which is a rec program, but it's more of a club style program. Um, and so he was not aware he was supposed to be going to these meetings monthly and if we didn't make it to him that we might face some kind of a league suspension or you know something along those lines. Uh, thankfully Gail is a board member there and was able to keep Juno on it. Um, since then uh, both myself as a chairman and Seamus as our rec director are sharing duties of attending these meetings because you can attend them virtually and they last about a half hour so it's not a really big deal for either one of us now that we know what we need to do so we always have someone in attendance. Um, we did have some um, outside you know community members show up to the meeting to speak their piece um they spoke their you know thoughts about Seamus and what he's doing with the Ridge Chopper program as well as the reason that Juno should continue to have the program it sounds like we've had the program for about 20 years would you say that's about a fair number that they've had this program going on I believe I I, I haven't been here as long as it's been going on but it sounds like it's been a great program for many years so we, we were able to talk to everyone. We're going to re um, go through the program uh, and reevaluate how we're running it as Juno because it is a club style program, not a, technically a rec internal Juno program. Uh, we do get a lot of players from outside community, uh, communities that don't have a soccer program. Uh, our next re up for it is in July. Uh, after we have this meeting in May, um, some of the thoughts that we're going to put out are going to be maybe reaching out to these, com these communities that don't offer a program that maybe they'll want to chip in and help us with ours, you know, as a way, because a lot of their um, 
their kids play in our in our league, which is you know good to see and good to have them come in here because they go to the Dodgers school. Um, once we finally got through all of that, we did discuss the splash pad. Uh, Seamus is going to start fundraising for the splash pad as we approved in uh, finances. We did put a hundred thousand dollars of the borrowing towards it, but that money is solely if we can't raise 100%, which we want to as the rec department towards that pad, we want that pad to be funded by the city, uh, you know, citizens. Um, and so that way it'll be something that everyone can come out and enjoy and try to get built for next year. Um, yeah, other than that, we're gonna have a meeting on Wednesday that's gonna be all full of soccer if anyone wants to come out. There you go. How much does the total cost of splash pad, like two? Was it? I believe because we, as the board, approved the larger uh, pump as well as we did the full recir uh, recirculation pump, uh, the total is about 350000 oh, 350. Yes. Okay. And that does include their estimated cost of utility. Uh, that is what the company that brought to us is estimated it'll cost to hook it up. However, both wastewater treatment and electric are going to provide quotes, real real quotes, now that we have a spot uh, to the group that's going to do it so they can redo their, their bid to make sure we have an accurate number to shoot for in our fundraising. Okay. So, yep. Okay. Anything else? That's it then. Any questions for Paul? Seeing none, moving on. Utility report. <coughs> we of course had a meeting. <laughs> How long? Three hours. <laughs> so uh, Jason Lau came from MSA, came and uh, presented the proposed layout layout of the Highland Oak Street project, and he showed where the water mains and the sewer line replacements, as well as the street sizing, <coughs> would be. And uh, and that was about it with Jason. Utility office hours have been changed from to 7:30 to 7:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, these new hours coincide better with customer needs as well as the electrical department work hours. Applications were reviewed and two recipients were chosen to receive scholarships from the utility commission. Um, Nick is working with Jason concerning the replacement of the electrical service in coordination with the Highland Street project. The current overhead, we talked a little bit about this uh, with that uh, street pole um, resolution. The current overhead service will be replaced with underground service. AT&T and Charter will also be moving their wires underground. MSA will determine where transformers need to be placed and if new customer meter sockets need to be installed due to the construction, the Utility Commission will have to cover the cost. Um, the new poles will be installed approximately 200 feet apart, uh, and we talked about the height of the poles already. Um, Auto Pet is applying for a new service transformer, and one will be ordered when sizing is determined. This connection for delinquent accounts have begun. The summer help position has been posted. <clears throat> um, Tim Gasner was seeking quotes for lift number two upgrade and he submitted the required reports to the DNR. Well number two is now online. Radium tests are well below the required limit. There was a discrepancy between sentience and utilities flow meters. They were checked and it was found that our data is accurate. Um, we talked about the splash pad, but we just talked about that again, so. Um, emergency de training for the water department employees is underway. We discussed the wastewater financial condition and talked about possible rate increases. The contract with Sensient is a priority, and I know I bring it up every, every meeting, but it is a priority and we need to apply some pressure to get this done by the end of May. And Tom Unke of Baker Tilly is handling negotiations. Uh, the mayor shared an article with the commission from the newspaper pointing out that the state is paying delinquent bills of investor-owned utilities. And Nick is going to inquire if municipal, utility, municipal utilities are eligible for that. 
And then we went into closed session and we came out of closed session and we approved a 20 cent raise for Peggy Schultz due to extenuating circumstances. And that was it. Any questions for Richard? If you wish to see the plans, we have them. If you haven't seen them for, I have them here for um, Highland Street Project and what's going on with that that will be. That's what we're working with, where it's coming off of. So is that going out for bid? John? Sorry, it is going out for bid. Um, I just wanted to mention that we will have, be having an informational meeting on May 27th um, in regards to this Highland Street Project. And that'll be here? It will be at the Community Center. And board of review again is what date? Uh, board of review is May 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. here at City Hall. Any questions for the utility reps? Seeing none. Moving on to old business. New business. John, not to put you on the spot, but I've been trying to get you hooked up with this reporter for quite some time. You want to do an overview of what Automatic Pet Care does and how many product lines that you're working on and presently have? Sure. Um, so again, we've been, we've been in general since 19... Oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> we actually, John and I met this yeah, past same. winter and put together an article that like, comes with our what was a quarterly magazine? Mm -hmm. I sent a few to your office, not sure if you received it, but... Um, yeah, we saw it, so mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, appreciate it. Um, so you still want me to do the overview or the... Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. For, for, for yeah so um, explain who we are. Again, we're um, automated pet care, pet care products, home of the litter robot. So we are the manufacturer of the world's best fully automatic litter box for cats. What does that mean? So we have a product that um, we like to say you never scoop again mm -hmm. once you put it in your litter box or litter robot. So the cat enters the, cat enters the litter robot, does its thing, jumps out. The unit actually senses when the cat goes in. When the cat leaves, the timer's activated, you can set. After a period of time, the drum rotates. During that dr rotation, it sifts the litter. There's a screen inside, so the clean litter goes behind the screen. The waste is captured. There's a liner in the bottom of the litter robot. So no waste product. Gets to a certain spot, there's a hole going to the bottom drawer. The waste by gravity then falls into the drawer. The drum rotates back, the clean litter comes back around. So the waste is captured in a drawer with a carbon filter on it. So it, inside a bag. So it keeps the, the smell and odors away. And more importantly, it lets the, it refreshes your litter. So you use significantly less litter. And if you have a cat at home and you just have a static litter box, if you've had a cat, you know that over time, it's kind of like chiseling out concrete. You know, it piles up. This is, it's always refreshed. So it's much easier, particularly for if you might, um, if you're an expectant mother, you can't go near a normal kitty litter box, you can use ours because there's no dust coming off of it. Um, if you're an elderly person and scooping it's very difficult, we take care of that. So we manufacture, um, we have a standard litter robot. We have a Wi Fi version of litter robot that'll even talk to your um, automatic vacuum cleaner. Your little your Roomba, it'll send a signal that says it's come clean around me, and you'll see the thing drive around. Mm -hmm. um, we also manufacture we call it feeder robot, so a similar thing where we automatically feed your cat. Um, we are working on other versions, so coming in the future, expect to see more advanced versions of our feeder robot. We'll have a, a probably a watering robot at some point. Um, we sell from Juno. Right now, we're shipping all over the world. We have shipments leaving every day everywhere in the United States, and we're shipping directly to customers in the EU and the UK. And also to distributors in Canada, Europe, and we just op recently opened up a distribution network into China. So I believe recently we had 20 containers of product leaving, shipping into China to be sold into China. Yeah, so our action. A <laughs> um, couple neat things about the um, what Brad Baxter, our CEO, founder and CEO set up. Most of our product is actually sourced within an hour of Juno. So we're not just bringing in a bunch of Chinese components and assembling here. We're Wisconsin based, we're proud of that fact. And well, Wisconsin made in the USA, that's something we're very proud of. Um, 
And again, we're sourcing local components because we make the best product in the world and that's why we want to keep it that way. And my parents have one, thanks to me. <laughs> and um, yeah, as I said before, we're right now we're about 220 people. We're, and that includes roughly 60 open positions that we need, we're still looking to fill immediately. And our, our pathway will get us to about 400 people in the near term. So in 2020 was a great year for us. Our sales almost doubled. We almost had a triple digit increase. That was a great year for us, and we're having a great 2021. Awesome. And sales last year were what? What's that? Sales last year were? Um, we were in the, um, we were, we generally don't like to give out actual sales numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we double, but we try not, we, that's something we generally don't publish, so. Okay. Uh, but we're great, great um, amount of growth, and like I say, we're really excited to be expanding here in town. Um, and you have an accessory line of pet toys? Yep, that's right, thank you. Yeah, we have our, so we have, we actually manufacture our own litter. It's mined in Wyoming, uh, bentonite clay that we use. And as Dan said, we have a full line of accessory cat products. So we have toys, tunnels, mats to go under your, under your litter robot, cleaners for your litter robot. We really want to be your full service provider for your pet. We sell directly on our website. We have some very entertaining YouTube videos out there. Um, our commercial, our 2020 Litter Robot commercials on YouTube, it's it's a hilarious minute and 50 second watch. It'll it's crack. We wanted our creative director won an award for that at some at an advertising thing. It's it's very clever. So, only for cats. Right now, it's only for cats. Um, we do have a line of dog furniture. We also have furniture accessories that go with our product. Um, credenzas and storage things to help hide your litter robot and make it part of the furniture. Uh, we, we will be introducing some dog furniture as well, like crates and hutches that you can keep your dog during the day that don't look like a dog crate sitting in the corner. Yeah. Awesome. So as we see expansion going on, we'll keep getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get them to go in the litter robot though. <laughs> 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 so, that's our product line. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No other new business. Move on to approve provincial licenses for 45 days. Stephanie Jacobs, is there a motion to accept? So second. Motion by Shank, second by Schuster. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Carried. Approved regular bartenders for 2020 expires June 30th, 2021. Recommend for approval, Stephanie M. Jacobs. I'll make that motion. Motion by Grant. Second. Second by Schuster. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Shank. Pardon, motion by Brown, second by Shanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. This meeting is closed.